Welcome back to another episode of Harmonious at Lunch, the show that fuels your business success. I'm Brandon Gano, your host and guide through the world of harmonious business growth. Today, we're unlocking powerful strategies with industry experts to help your business thrive. If you're a business owner, entrepreneur, or executive, you are in the right place. Join me and our incredible guest today on the journey to clarity, growth, and success. It is time to revolutionize your approach to business. Let's dive in with another episode of Harmonious at Lunch. Welcome back to some more bite-sized business advice for all my fellow nerds out there. I have probably the greatest episode lined up for us. We're going to talk about your brain and how to use your whole brain to get out of ruts, grow your business, improve your success in life, and I'm sure a number of different things. So we're going to nerd out on the brain today with an amazing guest, Liam Naden, who I am excited to chat with. Before we go any further, Liam, welcome to the show. Thanks for being here. Hi, Brandon. Thanks very much for having me. So as I as I hinted at there, I, I can be a bit of a nerd. I like figuring out, you know, how does the brain work? How are we leveraging it? How are we maybe asleep at the wheel in our lives? Uh, obviously, this conversation is geared towards business. And I think we find ourselves as business owners, entrepreneurs, executives, we get stuck in these ruts, right? And it's usually, it's always, let's admit, it's always our fault. We're always doing something to ourselves. So before we kind of dive into the brain side of things, I'm curious about your journey. How did you come along and, and find yourself in this line of work? Well, I was like, Probably everybody listening to this show, I've been a, or I am a small business owner, an entrepreneur. I've had 18 different businesses in my life. And I've also been, like probably everyone listening, driven throughout my life to want to be the best that I can be. How can I be really successful? How can I make lots of money and have a great life? I mean, that's what we, why we have our own business. That's why we're entrepreneurs. We don't want to just settle for mediocrity. So as I was building up my businesses, you know, I spent a lot of time learning about business, marketing, everything I could to do uh, to learn about how to be successful in business. And I also did a lot of stuff on being personally successful. So I did, I did a lot of self-help, personal development, and also spiritual and religious studies as well. But I was the guy who went to all the seminars. You know, I read all of the books. I did all of the courses. Whenever I could find something that I thought could help me be, be more successful, I really tried it. And as I say, I didn't just read the books. I really applied as much information. I did NLP and all of these different practices. I Lots of goal-setting workshops, learning how to set goals, learning how to visualize, having all of your, having affirmations and changing your thinking, being more motivated, changing your beliefs. So I was an absolute expert on success, and I achieved a lot of success in business. As I say, I've had 18 different businesses. I became a millionaire. I had the houses the boat, the lifestyle, the travel. But something happened in my mid-40s that I hope doesn't happen to anybody listening, and it should never have happened to me, knowing so much about success, and that is I went from being a multimillionaire to losing everything and becoming homeless virtually overnight. And I ended up having to move in with my elderly mother, who was in her 70s, and sleep on the sofa in the, the living room of her small apartment. So this was never on my goals list. I was a successful entrepreneur. I knew how to set up businesses. I knew how to make things happen. I knew how to do the deals, make the money. And I knew how to manage my thinking and, and you know, my goals and all of those sorts of things. So I wanted to figure out, well, first of all, I couldn't figure out why this, has happened, this had happened to me. And when I went through this experience and then I went through the other side, what happened after that was really quite amazing in the sense that, I started to rebuild my life. I started to make really good money again. I started to create new businesses. On a personal level, I created a new relationship, which was far different to any other that I'd had before. But what I was starting to do was really live my dreams. And it was in a way that I was way beyond what I even thought I'd be doing. So for instance, I spent eight years on a new, I bought a new yacht and sailed for eight years around 15 countries in Europe. And I did all of this amazing travel while I was running my businesses. But one of the really interesting things was, or a couple of interesting things, was firstly, the difference between my new life, if you like, and the life I'd had before 
was before I'd always been chasing after success. I'd always been looking for the next opportunity, the next piece of information. What else could I learn? What more skills could I develop to improve my business, to make more money? How can I set bigger goals? How can I be more motivated? How can I be make my performance more of you know more effective? All of those things. I was chasing hard. And with that came a lot of success, but came a lot of stress and problems as well. And I never quite had that feeling that I'd ever made it. Didn't matter how much money I'd made or how much I achieved. I had I'd have a little feeling of yeah, okay, but what next? I never really felt that I quite got there. I never felt that I was in control of my life. And I had lots of stress and problems. And I was, and I thought, well, this is just natural. If you're an entrepreneur, this is the price of success is stress and problems. But my new life, sailing around the world, running businesses, having a wonderful relationship, and really having a good time, I remember thinking, where are the problems? Where's the stress? Because they weren't there. And what was really happening, and this sounds a bit woo-woo, but it has a biological basis, which we can talk about. But basically, I was chasing after success before, but now it felt like success was chasing after me. People were showing up. Things were showing up. Opportunities, new ideas, and everything was working just in, in so much of a better and a more flowing way without and without the stress and problems. And I said to myself, I don't know what I'm doing differently, but it's nothing compared to what I thought I should be doing. And whatever it is, I'm going to work out and I'm going to figure out what it is so that I keep doing it. I don't want to mess this up because life has taken on this, this feeling of flow and, and true success. I feel in control of my life. I'm not dealing with problems and stress all the time. Things are happening, happening in a good way. Life is flowing. And I wanted to find out what it was. And what I discovered was something we'd all completely overlooked, and that is there is actually a biological explanation for what creates success in our life and what creates failure in our life. And in our business, it's very applicable to that as well, because here we are thinking we're making the decisions, but things are happening around us. Why are things happening around us that we, we seem to be out of control of? Can we be in control of those things? And all of it comes down to an understanding that, there, as I say, there is a biology of success that is as practical and predictable as other biological laws, even like the law of gravity. You know, you know, if you walk off a 10 story building, it doesn't matter how much you pray or how motivated you are, how many books you've read, how many beliefs changing systems you've tried to develop, you're going to fall down. And it's the same with success and the results you get in your life. It doesn't matter how much you struggle. If you're not following the principles of how you work biologically, then you're not going to get the right results. You're going to get results you don't want. And so that's what I do now is, sh is share with people how this works. I mean, that's obviously very intriguing. And it sounds like it sounds like all business owners and entrepreneurs in particular need that. It sounds like all people in the world need that because we we tend to get in our own way, if you will, um, or, or just not prioritize the things that are actually going to move us forward. So I'm curious, you talk about um, or, or the topic of the episode is, is using the four parts of your brain to achieve success in life. So can we start to unpack this in, in the time that we have left? And uh, whatever yeah. we don't get to, I'll send you over to Liam's website. You can learn more about him. But uh, Liam, can we start to unpack what, what are these things, yeah. that, these principles that you're talking about? Well, the most important thing to realize is that nature is based on success. Everything in nature, if you were to ask any scientist, what is, how is nature wired? How is all of biology wired. Everything is wired to be the best that it can be so that it has the greatest chance for survival. Survival is the overwhelming thing that every living thing is designed to try and achieve. And because of that, nature has provided every living thing with a mechanism or a machine to ensure that it has the greatest chance for survival by being the best that it can be. So, and that machine is a brain. And being the best that you can be for a human means physically the best you can be, but also mentally and emotionally being the best that you can be, which means to be happy. So your brain is literally this computer, a biological computer that is designed to ensure that you are the best that you can be, that you live the best life possible on every level so that you have the greatest chance for living the longest, which is your primary biological purpose. So if you have problems in your life, if things, if you're not being the best that you can be, if you don't feel that you're in control of your life, if you, if you're dealing with all of these 
all sorts of stress and problems, it's not because those are natural. It's because you're not using this machine the right way because it's, it is just a machine. It's programmed biologically to ensure that you don't have problems, that you don't have stress. But if you don't use it the right way, it's, going to, it's not going to deliver you the right result. And what I've created is a biological model of how your brain works. There are four parts to it. And essentially, it comes down to knowing which part of the brain you need, creates success and creates the results in your life. And the other part of the four parts that most people are using, which is what keeps them stuck. You know, it's a little bit like if you're driving a motor car, now, you know, a motor car is, is a really simple machine in terms of what it's designed to do. One thing, get you from where you are to where you want to go. It's going to do that predictably, easily, reliably. But if you're not using it the right way, it's not going to do it properly. You're going to end up with problems. You might not even get there at all. It's going to be, might be a really uncomfortable journey. You know, imagine trying to drive with the handbrake on and the, and the accelerator at the same time. And you do that because you didn't know that, that, that the right way to drive it. So, Essentially, these four parts of the brain, our natural state to, for living, being the best that we can be, is created by something I call the creative brain. And the creative brain is a very special part of your brain that's right in the center of your skull. And this is the part that's responsible for your, as it, the word says, creativity, but also your imagination, your resourcefulness, your motivation, your intuition. And this is where your problem solving ability actually is located. Because how many times have we all been stressed with a problem and trying to figure out what to do? And we don't know the answer and we're all confused. And no matter how much effort we put in, we can't figure out the solution to a problem. And yet we forget about it for a while. And all of a sudden, the answer comes to us. So this is not the thinking brain. This is not the figure it out as you go, trying to work it out stuff with bombarding your brain with information. Because remember, things like intuition and gut feelings, you know, in business, all the time, I used to make terrible decisions. And I'd make a decision that I knew was wrong. And I'd have this gut instinct. You shouldn't do that. That's the wrong decision. But I was motivated by fear. So I'd employ the wrong people. You know, how many times have we been in this situation and we say, this person isn't really right for the job, but I'll make it work. He's the best I could find. And I won't find, I might not be able to find anyone else to replace him anyway. So I know I've got a problem, but I can fix it. I'll make it work. There's a little voice saying to us, that's not the way to fix this problem. You, you've got the wrong person. It could be in our business. We've got some customers that are that are um, driving us mad. And, you know, they're not good customers, but we're afraid to lose them. And we keep telling ourselves that we can fix these problems, but we never do fix those problems. Well, oh, but that's because we're in a state of fear and stress. And how your brain works, and I really encourage people to go to my website, to look, see this explained in more detail because we haven't got time really to get to it too much here. But how this works is when you feel fear, stress, worry, and anxiety, you shut down this part that I call the creative brain. You literally block off your problem-solving ability, your ability to see the big picture, your ability to see opportunities in your business, your ability to do the right thing. You, you block off all of this. And that's why we say to ourselves, I don't know what to do. I'm so confused. You know, I just wish I could solve this problem. We're using, we're shutting down this part of the brain that has all of those answers. We're trying to use another part that's not designed for that. So the real trick, it makes life so much easier and better is when you actually use your brain to do its job, which is to give you the best life possible so that you have the greatest chance for biological survival. It's a lot easier to run your business and your life, and it's far more productive. You get so much more done and you achieve and you get that thing that we're all looking for feeling great feeling fulfilled feeling in control of your life which is what we're designed to do so it's far easier to do that when you understand how to access that part of your brain and let that do its job rather than staying in the struggle state and convincing ourselves that yes i can solve the problems i can do it and i'm motivated and all those things which are all based on fear and fear is what is going to keep you stuck and stop you from using this part of your brain. So I guess this this begs the question, is fear is going to happen, right? I, I don't think you can prevent those negative emotions. That's that's the common response to things. It's the fight or flight response that we naturally and instinctively have. How do you get yourself quickly back into the creative state, into the creative part of your brain? Because it sounds like, I mean, is this, 
is it the subconscious part of your brain? Am I am I going too far to say that? How do you get yourself there consistently? Well, can I just pick you up on one thing where you say fear is going to happen? That's the problem. That is the belief that's keeping everybody stuck. Fear is what not going to does not necessarily happen because there's only one purpose of biologically for fear in your life, and that is to get you to react to an immediate threat to your survival. That is the purpose. Your brains, because the, the mechanism that you're activating through fear is exactly is only useful in that situation. All of the other things that we that create fear in our life are the result of using our brain the wrong way. Because what we've trained our brain to do through the, from the moment we were born and through all these wrong ideas, we've trained our brain to be afraid of things that, that, that it's, it shouldn't be afraid of. Our brain is constantly telling us there are threats to our survival when they're not there. And it's because we haven't trained our brain the right way, we've, we've turned it into a habit to say um, fear is natural. Fear, it's a bit like if someone came along to you and said, here's a glass of liquid I'd like you to drink. And you'd say, well, what is it? And they say, hydrochloric acid. And you say, well, I'm not going to drink that. It's going to harm me or even kill me. And it doesn't matter. And they would give you all sorts of justifications as to why you would drink it. Oh, it's natural. Everybody else says you should. There are all these things happening in the world. And if you don't drink it, no one will ever talk to you again and you'll lose everything you have. And you would say, but I understand the biology, the actual mechanics of what drinking hydrochloric acid does. Doesn't matter all that stuff, the justification saying, well, it's natural and everyone does it. I know biologically what it does. And it's the same with fear. Fear has a biological effect and it doesn't matter. You can justify it and say it's natural, but it's not. You can say, well, everyone's got fear. Not everybody's got fear. Who do we admire the most? The people who don't have fear, because when you don't have fear, you act with clarity, you act with assertiveness. You get the right results. You're in the flow. You're in the zone. You know it's going to happen. And it does because that's what your brain is literally doing for you. So what it becomes is an exercise like hydrochloric acid is to say, well, what what can I do to get out of drinking hydrochloric acid? What can we do out of feeling fear? Plenty of things. I teach this in much more detail. But think about you don't have to watch the news. You don't actually have to have that person in your business. You don't have to have that business. You don't have to have that relationship. You don't have to have that conversation if all of those things make you feel bad and make you feel afraid. And the only reason you would hang on to those things is because you didn't understand that when you get rid of that, that feeling of fear, stress, anxiety, and the situation that's causing it, your brain, your creative brain, which is a 500 trillion computer microprocessor machine that's designed to make sure everything in your life works out the, for the best so that you live you live the longest possible by being the best that you can be when you understand that you allow it to do its job you don't worry about what's going to happen because you know your brain is going to make it happen it's going to bring the right things that sometimes might call luck you know i never had so many miracles show up in my life and amazing things happen is when i started to use this creative brain and let go of fear and uh, that's the way it works that's why biology works but we're so bogged down in our thinking brain and trying to figure it all out and, and thinking that problems and stress and all these things are natural. Look around the, bio, the natural world. Where are problems and stress? Where else in nature do problems and stress exist? They don't. Everything works perfectly. Everything is in, in total harmony with its environment. That's the way we're supposed to be. That's the way we're designed to be. But we've just trained this machine the wrong way so that it creates all these problems for us. Mm, yeah, I think that's that's one of the easiest examples is look at look at an animal look at a deer like a deer is not creating stress in its life over thinking it should be a ceo deer or a, an employee w2 deer those are inherently human problems that we continue to put on ourselves so this is this is fascinating and i, I would love to unpack this more but we don't have enough time to do that maybe there's a part two coming i don't know we'll have to find out from liam but what i did do is put your you have a webinar that you're offering our listeners, letyourselfoffthehook.com. It's on the screen, wherever you're listening. It's also in the show notes as well. Um, Liam, give me the overview of, of what we get when we go listen to that webinar. Do you unpack this more? In a lot more detail. And when you finally get it and you understand what the, and this is quite simple, but when you really think, when you understand what the four parts are, you, it's a bit like a motor car. It, it's like the summary, the, the webinar of the manual. And you go, that makes so much sense. I've been doing it all the wrong way. And the beauty is when you start using it differently, you start to get very different results. And you start to say, wow, how did that happen? 
And that is, and then you start to really understand this is all natural. We are biological. This is as, this is as fa um, straightforward and, and, and easy to understand and logical as walking off a building and falling down because of gravity. You know, it's the same principle. So that's what I cover in more depth in the webinar. And I also take people on a little bit of my own journey of the from the stressed entrepreneur owning all the multiple houses and boats and, and things like that to actually getting what we all really want which is that feeling of being in control of our life and really feeling fulfilled and excited and knowing that we're doing the right thing and getting all of the results that we really want to have to really make a difference. Yeah, it sounds like the place that everybody wants to be anyway. So uh, that that's fascinating. Definitely go check that out. If you're watching or listening, I encourage you to check out the webinar. I know I will be after this recording, um, but Liam, thank you so much for being here and help us unpack this. Thanks so much for having me. It's been great to talk to you. For those of you watching, listening, wherever you are, like I said, go check out the webinar first, then hit the red subscribe button. Make sure you don't miss a minute of this daily show where we disrupt your thinking, get you out of that box, and bring you guests like this who can help you get out of your own way, grow your business, live a better life. It's not just always about business. You got to put the whole thing together, and we want to do that here on this show every single day. So thank you for listening to Harmonious at Lunch. We'll see you on the next